Hey everybody, Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com here. We've got a Premiere Pro tutorial for you today. We're gonna create this zooming out overview map transition. I don't really know how to describe it. It's gotten sent to me a few times and people have requested it. So here, just check it out. So it's pretty cool, right? I thought it was pretty neat when I saw it. Now, if you enjoy this tutorial, of course, subscribe to the channel using that red button down there. Um, and if you really like the tutorial, Consider buying a copy of my Photoshop course. It's all about how to retouch images. A link appears somewhere up there, but there's also a link down in the bio. It's the best way to support the channel. Um, and this whole channel is funded by viewers just like you. So thank you very much. Now let's jump into this video. Actually, I think this tutorial is going to be airing on the 4th of July. And I just so happened to wear my American flag shirt today. So that's kind of unintentionally cool. Uh, but yeah, I believe this tutorial is going to be out on July 4th. So without further ado, let's check it out. Now I do have Premiere Pro open here, but as you saw in the preview, we need the image of, uh, well, we need a map image. Google Maps is a great place to go to get maps. Uh, but you really want a really, really high resolution copy of a map image. So you can download Google Earth and you can try scabbing an image out of that, screenshotting stuff. There's this tool called Google Map Customizer, which is a little uh, web app that somebody built. Uh, I usually go with the satellite map. You can set dimensions for your map, set the dimension, and then you can just get rid of that sidebar and screenshot it. There's a bunch of screenshot tools that you can download and to, to try to get higher quality screenshots, things like that. But honestly, you just want a really big monitor and screenshot that. If you have a 4K or 5K or bigger monitor, go with that uh, and you just get a much nicer, higher quality image. You want a massive image if you can do it. You really, really, really want a big uh, Google Earth overview map. You can see here, I got an overview shot of the city of Boston, which is what we're gonna be working with today. Boston, super cool city. Uh, so anyway, let's just uh, talk about the effect a little bit. So we're gonna go from this driving down the street shot to fly up through the air and land over here where these guys are talking. Uh, the one note that I would make about this is, this is kind of, it's a less than ideal example because this shot is kind of like a cheaper looking, somebody stuck a camcorder you know, on the front of their car type shot. Whereas this is like very beautiful and sharp and it's got this different color grading effect applied to it and it's a moving shot and all that. So the, the more similar your shots are, and typically if it's a video that you've shot, they're gonna be similar enough because you're using the same camera and all that jazz, um, you'll be fine. But just, you know, this will work for this example, but it's not ideal. I'll put it to you that way. So right click on your first clip and choose new sequence from clip. So I'm gonna create this new sequence and drop our clip in place. Um, I'm going to choose to make this fit. I'm going to also move to my effect control so I don't have two copies of this video distracting me. Uh, and we're gonna move the playhead along and let's say somewhere right here around nine seconds, 10 seconds uh, as we approach this intersection. This is where we're gonna zoom out. So I'm just gonna grab the edge of my clip, pull it back, snap it to the playhead, and I'm gonna drag the second video clip out into place. So we just boom, go from one clip to the next. Now we need to actually create the transition. So first and foremost, most grab the map, drag it out above that transition and just stretch it out a little bit. So, and you know, I'm going to position it. So it's kind of straddling over uh, our little transition there. And don't worry, we're going to adjust the timing and the sizing. Once we get the animation figured out, then we'll adjust everything and make it just perfect. So I'm going to use my plus icon to zoom in on this a little bit. And we want to create what's called an adjustment layer. So go ahead and create the, uh, hit the new item uh, button and choose adjustment layer. And it's going to say width, height, all that jazz. It's all good. It matches our uh, little sequence here. That's great. There's the blank adjustment layer. Drag it and drop it just before the Boston map uh, image appears. So there it is right there. So now as our video approaches the point where we need to zoom out to our map, uh, we want to begin applying some effects to this adjustment layer. So select the adjustment layer, come over to the effects panel, and the first one we're going to look for is called replicate. Now we're going to be applying both a zoom out and a zoom in effect. I have dedicated tutorials for creating each of these effects. If you run a quick search on the channel, maybe I'll try to link them in here in this video, uh, but I have done tutorials on both of those effects. But anyway, grab replicate here, video, uh, video effects, stylize, replicate, drag and drop it onto the adjustment layer. And you can see we're getting this crazy four up version of the video. And that's because over here in the effect controls panel, there's replicate. And we're replicating this by a count of two. I actually want to replicate by a count of three. So we get this nine up, nine across video. Great. And now we need to apply a mirror effect to this. So just type in mirror, video effects, distort mirror. Great. I'm going to drag that and drop it in the same effect controls. And actually, I need four mirrors. So I'm going to drag two, three, and a fourth mirror. So I've got four mirrors. 
Now what we need to do is start changing uh, the reflection angle and center. So for the first mirror, reflection angle of zero degrees is perfect, but I want to change the reflection center here to be 1280 by 540. So you can see how it just moves it over. So we're starting to get this, you know, truly mirrored looking effect. Great. Uh, for the second one, I want to change the reflection angle to 90 degrees, and I want to change the reflection center uh, to 640 by 718. Oops, not 728, 718. There we go. And you can see what happened there. We just kind of bumped that down. So now we're mirroring along the bottom. Uh, this, the third mirror, we're going to reflect at 180 degrees, and we're going to change the reflection center here to 640, and 540 is just right. So you can see we're starting now. We're really starting to see the effect pulled together. We got to figure out what's going on up top here. That really needs to be flipped over. So we'll change the reflection angle to 270, and we will change the reflection center uh, to 640 by, whoops, by 360, I believe is what we need. There we go. And you can see now we have this, you know, rather trippy looking, you know, nine different versions of the same video all taking place simultaneously. Uh, but what this is going to do is allow us to zoom back into the center. And then when we create the zoom out, we automatically have all of this fill around the edges. So it doesn't just sort of zoom out and you see this big black ring around everything. We want to drag out a second copy of that adjustment layer. See, I got it here. It's actually still a blank adjustment layer. Uh, the adjustment layer that has stuff is the one that's actually in the timeline. You see, replicate in those four mirrors. But the adjustment layer we just dragged out, still a blank adjustment layer. So with this adjustment layer, we want to drag it out above the Boston map a little bit because this part of the effect is going to take place from the driving clip over to the map clip. And this is where we create the actual transition itself. We're going to go back to effects and we're going to look for an effect called transform. And there it is, video effects distort transform. Drag and drop that on the top adjustment layer that we just created. And what we're interested in here is scaling. So we want to scale this back to 300%. So if I say 300% or not back to, we want to scale it into 300%. What that's going to do is scale right into the center where we have that one copy of the video. And now outside of this, we have eight other versions of this exact video mirrored on every side. And to make the effect really work, we want to move a little bit closer to where the transition takes place. And by the transition, I mean the transition between uh, or when the Boston map appears. So really that little transition line right there. Move a little closer to it. And we're going to hit this little stopwatch, which is going to toggle the animation as the tooltip has so kindly let us know. And then I'm going to grab this playhead and move over just to the other side of, you know, where the clip begins. I don't want to move too far over there. And you can see we're really zoomed in on our Boston map now because this is also scaling this in to 300%, but the, we want to drop a keyframe here and return this to 100%. We can do both by just hitting this reset parameter button. Boom. Takes us back to 100% and drops that keyframe. So what we have happening is this zooming out effect that starts on the one clip and finishes on the other, just like so. You can see that. Now, the obvious problem is here on the first clip, you can very clearly see the mirroring. But part of the reason that I chose to go with this transform effect is because we can come down here and shut off use compositions shutter. That's the piece of the word that's missing. Uncheck that and change the shutter angle to like 360 degrees and it's going to automatically bake in some blur. Now, th this is this little red line is appearing because this area is not rendered at all, which means it's going to be kind of low quality when we preview it. But when I play through it, you can see we get this nice just zip, zoom out, and now we're up above the city uh, exactly as we should be. Now, I did not position this map when we first uh, dropped it in place, but that's fine because right now the only thing affecting it is this adjustment layer above it. So I can actually select that map and come over here to positioning and say like, you know what, I want this to be, I don't know, let's just, let's try to spitball this, 2260 by like 1120 or something. Yeah, that'll bring us up close to the top, sort of like the northwestern corner of the map. Now that's cool. So we're gonna zoom out and we're gonna zoom right up above that part of the city. That's great. So it's almost like we're coming up off of one of these streets here where this car would, you know, be driving. So now that we've got that part down pat, we want to apply the animation that's going to kind of slide us across the city to the other part of the city and zoom us back in. And here's how we're going to do that. So I'm going to select that adjustment layer because we want to, whoops, I don't want to double click it. Uh, I want to see where my animation ends. My animation ends right on that keyframe. By the way, we can just select both of these keyframes, right click and give this like an auto bezier. It'll just make it a little bit smoother of a transition, right? It'll kind of make it whoop, bounce out a little bit more. And we want to drop our playhead right on that keyframe. And now we want to nudge this to the right probably about five keyframes, or not five keyframes, just five frames. So one, two, three, four, five. The reason we're doing that is because we want it to hold in midair for a split second before it starts moving across the city. So this is, we're still on this adjustment layer, but now we want to select the Boston map PNG, and we want to apply that same transform effect to our map. 
So there we go. I dropped it, dropped it in place there. And I'm most interested now in changing the position here. So I'm going to change the position and I can really freehand this if I want, but I want to drop a keyframe. So I'm going to say, look, toggle position. I want my position to begin right where it is, but then I want it to slide across the city. So I'm going to hold down shift and use my right arrow key to go one, two, maybe three. I'll jump, I'll jump down about 15 frames. Something like that uh, works out well. And now I'm just going to hover over. If I hover over, whoops, I want to I want to redo that, not undo that, my mistake. I want to hover over. You can see when I hover over these numbers, I get like the little scrubby arrow side to side. And I'm going to just pull the map in the direction I want to pull it. So I'm going to say, we're going to move over this way. And the reason, by the way, this is going to work is because you can see we're, we're dropping that keyframe there. It's, it's going to be a newly animated sort of stop, if you will. So we're going to come way over to the other side of the city. And then we're going to move down here down to kind of this southern part of the map. Kind of maybe like right there would be cool, right? So if we look at our animation right now, we zoom out and then we slide across, right? You see that? So we zoom out and we slide across and then it just stops. And the next part obviously is going to be zooming back in. Uh, but let's just uh, select our map again. Let's grab both those keyframes and let's apply that same auto Bezier, right? Click on one of them, temporal interpolation, auto Bezier, just like that. And let's just see here, boom, we slide right across, looks good. We may actually want a little bit of that blur, so we can just go ahead and uncheck the use composition shutter. Give this a shutter angle of, angle of like 360. Why not have that motion blur, right? We just fly across the sky nice and quickly, boom, just like that. And now we're gonna zoom back in. So we can really just use this same exact transform effect and just use the scale. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my playhead right to where the animation for the movement ends, right there, right? And what do we give it? About five frames that it held in the air after it zoomed out. So let's let it hold here for five frames as well. One, two, three, four, five, just like that. And now let's drop a keyframe for scaling. So I'm going to choose to toggle the animation. We're at hundred percent. And now I'm going to move over maybe about, I don't know, five, six, seven frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, something like that. And let's zoom this in to, I don't know, 300, 350%, something like that. And you're going to have to give a Premiere Pro a second to render this out. You can see this, it even flicked black for a second for me. Um, but it, it just, seems to be rather intensive on the CPU uh, when it zooms back in. But really no worries because we can back it up here and just play through it and we'll see. Boom, there we go. It zooms right in. Now, I don't know if you noticed, let's play through it one more time. It zooms in not like to here in the middle of the clip, but it's going to zoom in up here near the top corner of the clip. Watch this. Play through it. Zip zooms in. But maybe our two men walking clip down here takes place in the center of the clip. So how do we rectify that? Well, select the Boston map PNG or just your map there. And we, we want to sort of offset this video using the position options here. Um, so I want to place two keyframes that match up exactly with the scaling keyframes, right? As it scales inward, the position slides exactly as I need it to. So I'm going to use my little next and previous keyframes here to just go back to make sure I'm exactly where I need to be and then hit this little add or remove keyframe up here on the position uh, parameter here. So I'm going to select that keyframe. I'm actually going to right click temporal interpolation and set it back to linear. I'm going to get rid of the auto uh, Bezier and then I'm going to go to the next keyframe down here and I'm going to go back to my position parameter and add another keyframe. Now what we need to do is just change the position. You can scale it around as you wish uh, to, to move this so it scales to what looks like the center of uh, the map. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to guess at like, I don't know, negative 900 and negative 500 or something like that, uh, just because the screen is still not coming up and being totally responsive for us. And let's just try to play through it and we can see, whoa, I'm actually really, really close. You can see that's the intersection in the very middle of our frame here while I can see it. Let me play through it one more time. And you can see we're, we're actually really close to where we want to be. So let's try, select that Boston map again. And if I play through it, to right there, I want to I want to actually make this like maybe negative 950 and negative 550. So something like that should be cool. Uh, let's play through this and see what it looks like. There we go. So it zooms in close enough that it's going to work for us. Now, the key with this here, I want the zooming in effect to end over the two men walking clip. But you can see here, if I select the Boston map uh, graphic, that's where the last keyframe is. And we can tell by the playhead that it's still before we even get to the two men walking clip. So I actually, I, I can shorten my map because I don't need to see that much of it. And I can grab this whole bit and just slide it over kind of something like that. We'll just select our map and we'll trim it back to pretty much right there where the keyframe uh, ends, right? So I'll just grab that Boston map clip, drag it back to there, 
and then it'll zoom down right to where those two dudes are walking. So let's just see what this looks like. And uh, we can actually trim off the kind of the, the front of these adjustment layers too, because we certainly don't need them. So I'm gonna move over to the point at which the animation starts here on this top adjustment layer, or maybe just before it, just like that. Select both adjustment layers and just trim it just like that. So that's really the transition. It's those two adjustment layers there and the transform effect that we applied to the map. And of course you can go in, tweak and adjust and move your positioning, you know, spread the keyframes out to make it happen a little slower or crunch them together to make it fly by a little faster. Guys, if you've enjoyed this again, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, drop a comment down below, you know, all that good stuff for creating this zooming out and panning over the city drone map transition effect in Premiere Pro. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.